Let me tell this story. <laughs> I'm not going to reveal the family. It's a family in this area. A uh, good friend of mine. I, got, I woke up Sunday morning to a text message, frantic, because her dad had just died. And it was in an area uh, a few hours from Jackson. And they were concerned about not being able to do a funeral because the executive orders limit, put limitations on funerals. Mm -hmm. Even if they're socially distanced, they still put limitations on funerals. So I dug into it and uh, I asked her, tell me a little bit of the background. <sighs> I'm going to do this with Try Not to Cry. So she said, Mike, uh, my dad, had a, he's 85 years old, big strapping farmer, bigger than me. Picture of health. He fell and had a closed head injury early in the year. Uh, they took him home for rehab, and after a few weeks, his wife of 65 years said, you know, I can't give him the help he needs. This moving to assisted living so he can get the rehab. And he was making progress, making progress. He was going up and down the aisles in a wheelchair, and the nurses were... You know, loving him because he's just a amenable guy. Three or four days after he went to the uh, assisted living facility, the stay home, stay safe order came in, in place. So now he's in this facility and he can't see his wife, his wife of 65 years. Mm -hmm. And so every day for the next 34 days, he just said, when can I see my wife? When can I see my wife? And after about a week, he began to deteriorate. He lost 45 pounds in 31 days. And then my friend got a call last Saturday night, Friday night, we, we could go tonight, and said, you better come visit him because he's not doing well. So she broke the law by going there, broke the law, executive order laws, by going into the facility to see her dad, who they, she was been told was going to die, she got to the room long in time enough to hold his hand. He opened his eyes, and, she, and he was obviously suffering. And um, she said, Dad, it's okay. You can go to heaven. And he died. Okay? He didn't die of a close head injury. He didn't die of the flu. He didn't die of COVID. He died of a broken heart. And that's happening all across the state because, we're, because one person is making the decisions on what you and I can do and not letting us have any latitude to make any judgment. She broke, her, his daughter broke the law twice to go see him just before he died. And he died because he couldn't see his wife. He was making progress. Now, I want you to put that in perspective. That is not a unique situation. That's happening across the state. And by the way, you might ask the question, well, what's the prevalence of the disease in that area? None. We've been begging for weeks to allow us to do a regional approach so we can risk, risk assess and then slowly let people back to their some semblance of life. This isn't about business. It's about lives. And we lock down an entire state and we're costing lives for other reasons.